Here we have a Collins radio station broadcast turntable. This is a three-speed model from, as best I can tell, 1966, although they made this particular turntable for a number of years under the QRK and Collins brand name. I got this from an old radio station owner who had four or five of these various turntables up in his attic and he was getting ready to toss them and I expressed an interest in them and he tossed them in the back of our vehicle so that made me happy. Uh, the first problem is the tone arm. I actually ended up with two of these turntables. The other one has a complete tone arm but this one has the remains of a tone arm which is one of those old gray research uh, heavy duty all metal tone arms that has the reservoir here for the silicon damping fluid. I believe it was some kind of silicon based oil that they used for damping fluid. You know, unfortunately I don't have one of those arms and I would like to find a matching tone arm to so the turntable will match the other one that I have because I'm going to fix the two of them up hopefully and use them as part of my little part 15 AM station but thanks to the Asian audio fools those old gray research tone arms tend to go for more money than what I think they're worth on the standard auction site that everybody loves so much however I have one of these tone arms this is a Microtrack 303 tone arm which was a very common tone arm in the 70s and 80s Although this one itself is not in the best of shape, the wiring harness is gone completely out of it, so I'm going to have to rewire the thing. But this tone arm will fit in the existing mounting holes that the old gray research tone arm came from. Uh, second problem we have is the motor mounts are just totally rotten. Is the get this up where you can see. Yeah, the motor mounts are totally rotten. Those are the rubber shock mounts that's supposed to help prevent motor vibration from making its way up through the turntable base and through the tone arm. It's, it's a common problem for these motor mounts to rot, and there's a website where you can still obtain these parts. I think www.ruscoturntables.com, I believe. Uh, but before I order any parts for this thing, I want to make sure the drive motor is in decent shape or can be fixed. As you can see, this is a rather large motor for a turntable. Actually, the whole thing looks a little overkill for what you might consider a home turntable, but there's a reason for that. Number one, these broadcast turntables had to be made to withstand abuse from disc jockeys and they were designed to run basically 24-7 for many years of service with no trouble. Another reason these things were built so well is they had to come up to speed instantly so to speak. Most radio stations would cue a record up to play on the air and when the DJ hit the start button it had to be ready to go. So these things were built to withstand DJ abuse as well as come up to speed within a fraction of a second. High fidelity was really not the primary factor here since most of these turntables were used in AM radio stations. Durability and the ability to come up to speed was the main factor. Although with some modifications, you know, these turntables can be made into very decent high fidelity turntables, but I'm really not interested in that. When I get these turntables fixed up, they will be used in my little part 15 station. And I don't consider myself to be an audio fool, so, you know, I really don't care if there's a little background rumble. That doesn't, doesn't make any difference to me. Okay, now we will take this motor apart, clean it up, and see if it's uh, salvageable. And unfortunately this motor is seized solid as a rock, which is really not a good sign, but maybe I can take it apart and clean it up. 
and if this motor is shot I can still get motors for these turntables but they're a little on the expensive side so if I can avoid that that would make me happy I think a new motor will run around 125 plus shipping for one of these things here's our motor assembly removed from the turntable base to make it a little easier to work on now, these turntables actually don't have that many parts when you when you look at the grand scheme of things so they're really not that difficult to figure out here's our motor start cap a Mallory 3 microfarad 330 volt AC capacitor and a date code 6624 so I take that to mean 24th week of 1966 okay let's check this capacitor and see if it's still good okay we're reading 3.4 microfarads on the new capacitance meter okay so far so good on the capacitor tester Our power factors at like five percent so that's should be okay uh, electrolytic leakage test oh yeah no problems and here's our motor taken apart and I will caution you when you take one of these motors apart these Bodine motors they have a ball bearing that rests right here in the center of the motor shaft and here on the bottom of the motor you see I have it there in our little tray you want to make sure not to lose that bearing also some turntables, not all of them, but some of them have a ball bearing that rests down in the bottom of the uh, platter bearing assembly or the well, whatever you want to call it. You don't want to lose that bearing either. Now again, not all turntables have it, but some do. And you also want to make sure not to lose any of the washers that slide over the motor shaft. In this case, we had two washers that slid over the lower motor shaft. And I've now removed the capstan from the motor shaft, and the way you do that is remove four Allen screws using a wrench such as this. And if yours is like mine is, or was, it'll be real stubborn, so I had to grab it with the vice grips with one hand and hold the motor the rotor assembly with the other hand and twist and pull until it came off now this is what determines your speed obviously idler wheel makes contact here 78 45 and 33 rpm now this bearing is frozen solid as a rock which means i can't just pull the rotor out of here so the only thing i know to correct that is run some blue three and one oil which is designed for motors around this shaft here and let it soak down in there and maybe it'll free up enough where I can pull it apart and regarding this capstan as you can see it's kind of rusty and these are available new so if I choose to buy one or you can clean these up virtually any part you need for these turntables is still available in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few of these turntables still in use in some radio station. And you can see we have it apart now. And notice the white gunk on the motor shaft. It looks like whatever they used to lubricate this thing back then turned into some kind of a gunk, kind of like the grease and old BSR record changers. And just like on the lower motor shaft, we have several washers that slide over the upper motor shaft you want to keep up with those okay here we are with the motor reassembled and mounted back on the uh, motor hanger I cleaned out the bearings using standard rubbing alcohol and when you clean the bearings out on one of these you'll notice two holes in each bearing for the oil to circulate through you want to make sure that those holes are cleaned out good and then once you clean everything up re-lubricate with this blue three-in-one motor oil which I'm about out of 
and on the capacitor instead of soldering the leads directly to the capacitor I used quick connect terminals so if I have to replace the capacitor it won't be so difficult to do. Alright let's give it a power up test you can see it turns freely let's see what happens yeah not bad at all and this thing would be quieter if it wasn't resting on my workbench okay let's just see let me put the camera down a second hold it up like this well okay what happened okay there you go as you can hear it's much quieter when it's not resting on the workbench and all of these old broadcast turntable motors well let's say the Bodine motors anyway were a little bit noisy on all of them so I think we're good to go as far as the motor goes now we'll move on to the platter and the idler wheel assembly first let's remove the platter and that's accomplished by just lifting the platter off and like I said earlier, be careful because some of these turntables have a little ball bearing down in here. And you don't want to lose that ball bearing. As you can tell, this one is a little bit hard to rotate. And here we are removed from the turntable base. This one has the ball bearing captive in the platter shaft, so no worries about losing it. And we'll just clean this just like we did the motor with rubbing alcohol and we'll clean this out with rubbing alcohol and then re-lubricate with the 3-in-1 oil and it ought to be good to go. Okay, I now have the bearing assembly taken apart. Uh, this is the... this screws into the bottom of the spindle well and its position determines the height of the turntable platter and then this little portion here, when it's all put back together, is designed to how to hold the ball bearing and this little portion here was just caked up with old dried grease I think I'm going to use some white lithium grease to coat around here and then we want to clean this out real good okay we now have the center bearing assembly cleaned and lubricated I actually used a mixture of white lithium grease and the blue 3 in 1 oil and I misspoke earlier, there was a separate bearing that uh, I didn't catch at first because it got stuck up in there, but then it decided to fall out and hit the floor, but I caught it and put it all back together and everything turns everything turns fine now as far as the platter goes. Now the next thing we need to do is take this shifter apart and it's pretty self-explanatory you just remove these clips here and everything just slides out of place and we'll clean it just like we did everything else clean it with the rubbing alcohol and the contact cleaner and re-lube with the 3-in-1 oil and or the white lithium grease as needed and that should take care of all this but we're about out of time for this video and I've almost done all I can do anyway without ordering the rubber motor mounts. So when I get the needed parts in to complete this, I'll make another video. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.